Hi, I'm Dr. Joe and I am to lovethatface.com and thank you for watching our channel. If you follow us, you know that I am a cosmetic facial surgeon in Richmond, Virginia. All I do is head and neck surgery. I don't do boobs, bellies, or butts, so I'm a face guy. We're going to be talking today a little bit about osteomas and I have numerous videos on this, but our osteoma uh, patients keep growing and growing. We see people from all over the United States and internationally. So an osteoma, if you've never watched the videos, is a little knuckle or lump of benign bone on the forehead. They're very, very common. And I didn't realize how common they were until I really started uh, treating this and seeing all these patients. So basically, the old fashioned way to treat these is to make an incision on the forehead or a big incision on the scalp and pull everything down. I use uh, endoscopic surgery, same thing like we do, uh, like doctors do for shoulder or knee surgery. So I can make one or two little buttonhole incisions up in the hairline. And I've done this on people uh, that were bald like me, and we can even uh, a, uh, move the incisions to a very inconspicuous place if you don't have any hair. But if you have hair, it's really a breeze. Frequently, I can do it with one incision. Put the camera in, find the osteoma, take the camera out, smooth it down with a, uh, another electric instrument. Um, or sometimes if it's a big osteoma or if they're multiple, we'll make two small little buttonhole incisions. And I'll show you some of these pictures. So the whole procedure takes about half hour, 45 minutes. We sedate patients for this. Post-operatively, it's pretty amazing. I mean, every once in a while, somebody will have a headache. Um, most patients drive back to the office the next day. We do put a little wrap around the head for 24 hours. And a couple days after, some people could get a little swelling in the eyes or black and blue, but it's usually a very easy recovery. And these are some of the happiest patients because they've been walking around with this big bump on their head uh, their whole life. And it's distracting um, and, and people are sensitive about it because they're, they're in a conversation and somebody is focusing on that lump on their head. And so they're very happy uh, to have it off and to have it off in such an easy manner without any scars. Now, I get a lot of uh, people that come in or write to me and they say I have an osteoma and they send a picture of this lump. There are also, and more commonly than osteomas, cysts or benign soft tissue tumors like lipomas that cause a lump on the head. Now frequently these are mobile and squishy and you can move them around, but some of them become fibrotic and honestly they're hard to tell the difference between uh, a cyst uh, benign tumor or osteoma. So that's why we get a CT scan and the uh, little cone beam 3D CT scans are so popular, very easy to do, uh, or just an x-ray. But we have to document that that is bone versus soft tissue. And if it is a, a bony lesion, then it's an osteoma and we'll treat it that way. Also, we want to have that imaging, the x-ray or the CT, to make sure that it doesn't penetrate the skull and go into the brain or go deeper, which I have never seen that. Uh, I have seen some lesions that weren't osteomas that um, the patient didn't know they had. But in any event, 99% of the time, it's a little knuckle of bone, a benign osteoma, and that's how we treat it. So I'll show you some pictures of some interesting ones that we've done recently. And uh, thank you so much for your time. I'm Dr. Joe and I am too. Lovethatface.com. I'm going to do a little presentation here and talk about the diagnosis and treatment and recovery from osteomas. So you can see on the left, these are uh, two osteomas, different patients. And that's what the patient presents with a big old bump in their forehead that has bothered them for a long time. And when I say bothered them, rarely do they hurt. Every once in a while, they'll cause a headache or um, some pressure, but generally the patient doesn't feel uh, any discomfort. It's more of a physical thing, cosmetic thing that bothers them. On the right, you can see what the osteoma looks like when I put the camera under the scalp. So, I always get a CT scan for osteomas because many times the patient thinks they have an osteoma and it turns out that that actually uh, is not an osteoma but some other type of lesion which I will discuss later in this presentation. We have a cone beam CT scan in our office and uh, uh, since I see so many out of town patients, it's very easy for the patient to have this uh, done at their local hospital or one of the 
uh, standalone imaging centers and we can send a prescription to have this done. This picture is just to make sure you're watching. So one of the big situations about having a CT scan is to make sure that this is a simple little knuckle of bone uh, that we can shave down and not some other type of situation that is dangerous. Now these are CT scans um, of really big giant osteomas and these are not the type of osteomas that I'm treating. These obvi obviously are, uh, some of them are intracranial and would require a big time neurosurgery. But again, when we have a bump on the skull, we wanna make sure that it is just a bump and nothing else that is gonna be problematic because I do these in our in-office fully accredited surgery center and we use IV sedation or general anesthesia and uh, it's a pretty short procedure and a short recovery. People ask, you know, how long is the recovery for osteomas and really it's, it's very minimal, just a couple days. Um, some people have some swelling and they may have um, uh, bruises around their eyes, rarely. Uh, generally, it's a very benign situation. Here are other CT scans, again, that show a, a bump on the scalp, but it's actually an intracranial lesion and uh, in the brain. So it's very important to have a CT scan to know what you're dealing with. You wanna make uh, sure you're making a patient better. And the two things that we have to do are number one is safe surgery. And number two is a predictable and natural outcome. And this is a frontal sinus that is dilated. Uh, again, this is from a textbook, but just because somebody has a bump on their forehead, it does not mean that it is necessarily a benign osteoma. There are many other types of situations. So here's a typical osteoma. When you look at the patient, you can see this unsightly bump on the forehead. And then when you look at the CT, CT scan, you can see the bone protruding under the little white dot. Now that little white dot is a little metal piece about the size of a BB, and they'll put that on the patient's skin under a little piece of tape, just so they can see what's directly under that. Here are some other CT scans that you can see of osteomas that I have treated. And you can see the protruding bone in the upper left front part of the skull. Here's another patient. This is very interesting because this patient had multiple osteomas. And although some people may only have one, it's not uncommon to see people that have two, three, or sometimes even more. And again, I treat a lot of these and uh, it's very interesting to see what the CT scan is actually going to show. And if you look at the picture on the right, the sagittal part of the CT scan, you can see that these are just bumps on the what's called the outer table of the skull. In other words, they very superficial and they don't penetrate. You don't have to worry about um, getting into the deep skull or obviously getting into the brain. So in some cases, an ultrasound can be used instead of a CT scan, but I prefer a CT scan because it shows you uh, a lot more anatomic detail. Now, a lot of people uh, call or write or present stating, stating that they have an osteoma when it's really some soft tissue tumor, such as a lipoma or a cyst or, a, or some scar tissue uh, or tissue calcification. And obviously these can be removed, but not in the same way as an osteoma. So we need to make sure that it is actually an osteoma that we're treating. And this is why we uh, prefer uh, or require the CT scan. So many of these lesions can be removed uh, endoscopically, and many of them can't. Basically, I don't approach most of these soft tissue lesions endoscopically, but of course do approach the uh, hard tissue or osteomas endoscopically, and uh, I have done this on patients from all over the world. So frequently people ask about the incision scars for the endoscopic removal of osteomas, and it's a pretty easy situation. So our approach is to make one or two small buttonhole incisions in the hairline. Sometimes on bigger osteomas, uh, two incisions are required, but many times now I'm just using a single incision. And if you look at the picture on the right, that's immediately after surgery 
and we use dissolvable sutures and it's pretty much a scarless situation. Here's another osteoma on the right and on the left you can see the osteoma on the CT scan. And this is a very interesting case. Uh, this was an osteoma that I just showed and when we got in there it was actually three osteomas that were uh, all next to each other in a cluster. So this is what it looked like endoscopically. And uh, again, there is the before picture, and that's about one week later, the after picture. And that's the view of the osteoma, the multiple osteomas from the side. And then you can see the post-operative view after we have reduced the osteoma. And now we have nice, smooth, flat skull, and we've removed that deformity safely, effectively, and without any scar. So now some more before and after pictures. And again, I, I do a lot of these, and they're, uh, they're very rewarding because a lot of people don't understand that this uh, treatment is available. And some people are told, well, don't, don't treat that because they'll have to make a big incision and you'll have a scar. So these before and after pictures just show what we can do. And again, you see uh, two views of the before and then the, pic the after picture several weeks later. Another pretty big one. And these really bother people um, because when somebody has a lump on their forehead like that, when they meet new people and get into a conversation, people kind of keep glancing up at that bump. And many people are very self-conscious. And I can't tell you how many patients I've treated that said, gosh, Dr. Joe, I've been walking around with this for 30 years. I was so happy to find out that it could be removed so easily. Here's a before and after on the right. And if you look at the CT scan, just to the right of the arrow, you can see that osteoma, which looks pretty small in the CT, but clinically looked a lot bigger. Another patient before and after. Another before and after osteoma removal. Another patient. So these are actually pretty simple to do and make very happy patients and make the surgeon, me, very happy as well. Now here's a patient that came in and you can see that she had a scar there where somebody tried to remove this osteoma by making an incision over it and they weren't very successful. So I was able to not only remove the osteoma, but I lasered that scar and improved it a lot as you can see in the after picture. Here's another before and after. And this was a rather big osteoma, again, before and after, before and after. So I've done these on patients from all over the United States and uh, a number of patients from outside the United States as well. Another case. And here's two views. Uh, the top are the before pictures where you can see the osteoma. The bottom pictures are the after result. Here's a patient with two osteomas. You can see one in the center and then a little satellite osteoma uh, above the right eyebrow. Before and after. Before and after. As I stated earlier, this is a pretty short recovery. And really, I think it's pretty much a weekend recovery. So immediately after we do this, um, and we do this again in our outpatient fully accredited surgery center with IV or general anesthesia. And most of the patients that I do are from out of town. So they come to Richmond. Usually uh, we're looking at pictures and CT scans via email, and we can also uh, do an online consultation we want to make sure the patient is healthy for surgery and anesthesia and not taking anything that will make them bleed. And uh, they usually come to Richmond the day before and we'll do the physical examination and history and physical and 
discuss the surgery and anesthesia. And we generally do the surgery the next morning. Again, it takes 30 to 45 minutes. And um, when the patient, when we're done, we wash the patient's hair and put a little light uh, wrap around their forehead. And then we see them the next morning. Almost all my patients can go home the next day uh, after surgery. Once in a while, somebody will stay two days. It really is not a very painful situation, and it's um, uh, surprisingly benign recovery. Every once in a while, somebody has a headache. Most people don't bruise. However, I have had a couple patients that do get bruising uh, or swelling of the forehead or around the eyes. So it is typically a uh, in and out surgical procedure. Since most of the patients that I do are from out of town, um, the follow-up is a question that we like to discuss. Really, there I've never had to follow up on a patient. Uh, this has been a very predictable procedure. I have not had any problems with uh, bleeding or infection or any other problems. Uh, I've been doing this a long time, and I speak all over the United States and internationally on cosmetic facial surgery, so I usually know somebody in the area that if we had a uh, situation that needed looking into that I would be able to find one of my friends that take a peek at the patient but so far I just haven't had to do that. Um, there aren't many complications with this some of the possible would be bleeding uh, or hematoma uh, also infection and uh, I guess you could have a temporary uh, weakness of the forehead muscles but again I have I've never seen that. So uh, I enjoy doing this procedure. I've done uh, a lot of them, and uh, it's something that has just been very predictable in my hands. So osteoma removal is a pretty uh, simple situation. It probably takes about 45 minutes. Uh, we do this with IV sedation or general anesthesia, and uh, this is just something that I developed an interest in and uh, have perfected this over the years. I really uh, think this is fun surgery, and that might sound strange uh, to a patient, but, but surgeons have certain procedures that they really enjoy doing, and usually these are things that are safe and predictable and that they uh, have a clinical skill or knack for doing that. So it's been my uh, pleasure to speak to you about osteoma removal, and thank you for the greatest gift of all, and that's your time. I'm Dr. Joe Niamtu. I'm in Richmond, Virginia. Our website is www.lovethatface.com. And thank you for watching.